Hello. Welcome everyone who is joining us from different parts of the cities around the country. And we have a few from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, as always, they're joining us, they never miss. So thank you for, so much for joining. We are happy to have you um, attend this webinar, presenting you the last lecture of the Parenting with Purpose series organized by Texas Family Enrichment titled Leading Your Family Through Cyberspace. Rob, if you wanna turn off your, um, turn on your video and your mic, that'd be great. So um, today's lecture will be given by uh, Rob Dunikowski. He is an attor attorney with a, a federal law enforcement agency that investigates federal cyber crimes. He graduated from Notre Dame Law School, cum laude, in 2005. While at Notre Dame, he served as the editor-in-chief of the Notre Dame Journal of Law, Ethics, and Public Policy. After his law school, he clerked for U.S. District Judge George A. Solis. Mr. Dunikowski then worked as a commercial litigation associate with D.L. Piper before joining the federal government in 2007. He lives in Irving with his beautiful wife, Anna, whom I have the pleasure of knowing, and their five children. After his lecture, as always, Robert will answer a few questions from the audience, and you can submit uh, them through the Q&A button on your screen. So Robert, without further ado, we will go ahead and start. Okay, thank you, Pilar, I appreciate it. And thank you to the parents who are here. Um, I, I very much appreciate you taking time on a Saturday night to um, to see us, uh, to be here, and to be here for this presentation. You know, I, I think you sense parents have a duty to protect. We know that. Um, and the thing is, is that there's no pause button on that duty, right? You, when you give them a phone, you don't just get to turn it off, right? Turn off that duty to protect. That duty continues to exist. I think you know that, and that's why you're here. But I very much appreciate it. Um, I think, I think it's great. Um, thanks for the introduction, Pilar. Just, I mean, I think folks should know I'm not a professional in this area. I don't, you know, tech safety is not, I don't have a business. I don't, this is not what I do for my living. I'm just really a concerned dad that, um, you know, a few years ago started researching this. Just, you know, my line of work exposes me to the, the darkest side of this area. Um, and so, you know, I figured, uh, started doing research and just kind of um, figuring it out myself, basically. I have a background in technology, so that helps. Um, before I went to law school, I was an IT consultant um, for a couple of years. So I am good with tech. My dad was a college professor and he taught technology. So, you know, I, I grew up with it, but um, I am good with technology, but, um, but really I, I figured a lot of this out myself. Um, this is a very daunting topic for parents. And, and I think I, I recognize that. And I, and I say that at the outset, I, I think there's this sense that technology in large part is taking over our children's lives. Um, I, I was at the, just you know one anecdotal example and everybody sees this every day. I'm at the grocery store and there's these you know, nice looking high school girls and they're, they're standing there, but what are they doing? They're, they're glued around this screen, just, just you know, hovering to see what's on there. And I, I have no idea what's on there, but that's, that's kind of their, their existence now. Um, there's also just the, the phenomenon of, of pornography. I mean, it, it's everywhere. I think if you talk to folks that work with your kids, um, you'll hear that it's there. It, it's in the best Catholic schools. It's in the best Catholic universities. It's probably hit your house. Um, that, that's just you know, kind of where we're at. Um, I don't want to bombard you with statistics, but let me just uh, share my, my PowerPoint and just, just show you one. I mean, I think everybody has, um, you know, has seen these types of statistics, but this is exposure to pornography uh, in adolescence. And you can see for males, it's, you know, 85% range, 60% for females. You can see different, you know, different studies. This was a, this was an academic journal that just came out recently. Um, it's everywhere. It, it's hitting kids. It's hitting kids everywhere. But, but we know it's not just pornography. Right? It's not just pornography. Um, the other issue, a big one, is just use of time. Uh, Jean Twenge wrote a fantastic book called iGen a few years ago. Maybe you've had a chance to pick it up. It's on my resource list, which hopefully you'll be getting via email. Um, and, and she kind of had some, some numbers uh, that equate out to about six hours a day in a high school senior 
And that's, you know, equates to 95 days a year. That's, that's kind of the amount of time on average a few years ago that kids kids were putting in and i suspect with the rise of the continued rise of social media that that's that's increasing um so you know you've got the problem of pornography you've got the problem of use of time um there's also i think among our us there's this real sense of there's a disconnect with our values you know you've got this technology you've got mass media pumping out new series on netflix and you got social media you know uh what they call them influencers and all the and a lot of what they're promulgating is just disconnected with what we believe. You know, it's it's the materialism, it's the hedonism, it's the relativism, uh, and just you know, frankly, the, the self centeredness that comes with uh, the devices and the Instagram streams and the feeds and all that kind of stuff. It's there's just a disconnect, and we and we all face that. So I think that that's what's overwhelming us. Um, okay, so what do we do? That that's the challenge. I'm not going to harp on it. Uh, what's the challenge? What do we do? Um, well, I want to introduce you to um, Dr. Kevin Majors. Maybe some of you know him. He is a uh, he's a psychiatrist. He's at Harvard right now, and we're actually doing this course, his course right now at my office. It's called Optimal Work. It's fantastic. Um, but one of the things that he emphasizes is, in the face of a challenge, is the importance of being resilient. Um, so, you know, I was I was taking this course, and I'm thinking about the challenges that parents face. And of course, tech is there. It's it's kind of the biggest one. And okay, so what is what does Dr. Majors kind of have to say about have to say about resilience, and, and how can that help us tonight? Um, the big thing about resilience is seeing the challenge as an opportunity for growth. You know, that's that's kind of the key. Um, and he has two kind of critical points on how to be more resilient. The first is to internalize the challenge. Okay, what does that mean? So. If you look at tech, if you look at the challenge as something that's being imposed on you, right? You've got all this badness out there and you need to keep your, keep it away from your family. Okay, I have to do this filter. Well, what is that? That's burdensome, right? That's an external thing being imposed on you and that's burdensome. Uh, it saps you of your energy and it just, it weighs on you and it's hard. We feel that, we all feel that. Okay, what it means to internalize is to flip that and internalize the, the challenge. So, okay, I want to get better I'm, maybe I'm not good at technology originally. I want to get better at this. I want to find a way to install an in a filter. And you internalize that. You make it a challenge for yourself. Okay, I know I'm not good at this. I know I don't know, have a clue how to install an internet filter. And you internalize that challenge. I want to learn this. And I was thinking about this. And really, um, you know, I, I was thinking about my, my grandmother. And, and I think you probably have seen this as well in, in the older generation. I mean, they're amazing. They have learned to use iPhones. They've learned to do all this stuff. And I think it's because they internalize, they want it, you know, they want to connect with their grandkids. They want to learn how to, to, to learn these new technologies. And, and you're, they're learning this in their eighties and nineties. So, but I think that's, what's driving it is that, is that I want to, you know, that that's, that's the key. The second aspect to uh, taking on a challenge is to find a way to break it down into smaller parts. Okay. That's, you know, that's kind of an easy one um, that we can do that we can manage. And one trick there is to make the first step ridiculously easy right why because then you get traction and then you have your you have your plan the first step is very easy and then you get traction as you go you, you break it down into smaller parts so in the tech space i mean you, you think of you know you can make it ridiculously easy um one one really easy thing it's the first step in my plan which we'll talk about in a few minutes is to just get the technology out of bedrooms and into common areas okay step one yeah step one on the plan got it all right, so that's that's resilience, and if we can do that, um, I think we'll we'll have a lot more confidence and energy as we approach this this difficult challenge. Um, so, so my main goal tonight is to break down this challenge for you into some manageable parts, and hopefully give you something that you can take home as a suggested approach for implementing it in, in your own um, home life. My plan is going to have three parts. It's on, hopefully you have the handout. It's on the handout. Um, the first part is going to be to get your uh, house straight. Right, get your house in order. And, and so you're going to go through your home with a strategy and find ways to make it a safe place for your family. That's step one. Okay, step two is to develop a strategy for going forward because you can't just install the stuff and then be like, good, I'm done. And all right, I'm done. Um, no, you've got to have ongoing involvement. And so what's that going to look like? That's going to be step two. And I think step three is just critical. It's the outward turn. It's the turn towards other families. Um, 
this step is is going to be critical because this is going to be where you know on this i know on this call there's a lot of movers and shakers there's people that make an impact in their community and there's tons of people out there that need your help so that that third step is also going to be um critical so i want to start though before we get to all that i want to start with some philosophical background because i think it's important before we get into the practical side to really frame the issue philosophically. And I have a hat tip to Pilar because my thinking in this uh, area was, was largely in, uh, impacted by her, her presentation, which I have the hyperlink to in, in the slide. Um, that's my son, Joe, on the, you know, on the screen. And that's, uh, that is Pedro, Pilar's son. Pedro was Joe's mentor all through high school. And, and we have eternal gratitude to the Carantes and to Pedro because really helped shepherd Joe through his high school years. Um, but this, what that lecture taught me, it, it clicked in my brain, was it's all about the heart with technology. They're going to turn 18. They're going to walk out the door. They're going to be in a dorm room somewhere without you. And they're, they're going to be able to do what they want. So unless you convince them on the level of the heart about the need for discipline in this area, about the dangers that are out there, um, unless you do that, you're in trouble. You know, you can install all the filters you want, et cetera. But if you're not trying to connect on the level of the heart, you got you have a problem on your hands. So that that's kind of the key. Um, a couple of you know additional points on, on the philosophical side. And, and I'm gonna this is Jim Stenson. Uh, he wrote a book uh, several, you know, 2003, so nearly 20 years ago. And, but I think he has great points. It's funny because he's talking about like televisions and stuff, which, you know, I think it was a way easier challenge than the technology that, that we have it today, but, but the points are applicable. And one of the big ones was just, you've got to frame the issue as the tech being a rival for your kid's heart. And I love that because it, you know, it, it's consistent with Pilar's approach and it, it just makes sense. Everything that the technology is offering is offering your kids a rival to you and your values, and it's grasping for their hearts. You have to kind of remember that, and that's going to frame your entire, your entire approach. Another great point he has, it's really the excess, you know, the overindulgence. That's the problem. And, you know, it's not just the existence of technology. Technology is inherently bad. Um, it, it's the excess, it's the overindulgement. You've got to teach them to use moderation and to use good judgment with the types of you know, applications they're using, with the types of devices they're using, with the amount of time they're, they're spending on it. It's all of those issues which are gonna be just, just the critically important ones. And I'm thankful that you've had a series of talks that kind of have prepped you well for this. You know, All of the stuff that you've been learning in the past lectures, it's all applicable to the technology space. Um, so I think you're well versed there. And that's why the focus tonight will be a little bit more on the, on the technology side. Before we leave the philosophical side, though, I want to introduce you, if you don't know him already, to Cal Newport. You know, he has a very similar point to, um, to Jim Stenson, I think with an added emphasis on, you know, he's aware that there are teams and teams of engineers out there developing the technology and the applications in a manner to be addictive to capture your child's attention and to monetize that for, the, for their own profit. You know, he, he kind of focuses on that. So as you frame this issue, you know, it's about their heart that, you know, that's hugely important. But remember, it, it's a difficult struggle because you've got engineers working to grab your child's heart from you. You know, and I think Cal Newport frames that very well uh, in, this, in this book. He also uh, talks about, he gives you kind of a guiding philosophy, if you will, for using technology. And that's really the philosophy at the end of the day is, is this a effective way to accomplish something that I deeply value? That's it. You know, when you, when you pick up a new device and decide to add this to your family, is this an effective way to accomplish something that I deeply value? That's kind of the, the framework, which he suggests philosophically viewing some of these decisions through. And, and I love that. I think, I think that's very, very helpful. Okay, so that's that's the philosophical background. Now we're gonna jump to the main part of tonight's talk. And the main part of tonight's talk is really about, um, it's about these steps. And I think in particular, the first step, getting your house in order. Um, so let's, you know, let, let, let's jump in. The first step is getting your house in order. 
And my, you know, the first part and the first step of the first part, as I said, is put the tech in your common areas only. And all of this is kind of, you know, if, if you called me up and said, hey, what, what should I do in my house? This is this would be what I would say. So uh, that, that's what I'm giving you tonight. The tech in the common areas only. Why? Why is that? Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, not in bedrooms, uh, not in a downstairs office where the door can be closed, but in the kitchen area or in the living room area where mom is always walking by or dad's always walking by, those areas, that's where you want the technology to take, to take place. Um, honestly, I think this is the most important step. I really do. I, I think you can, you know, get filters and all this kind of stuff, but I think if you, if you start here and do this, you are making huge, huge headway. Um, okay, why? Um, First of all, you know, it removes a huge occasion of sin for your child. That's just the reality. Um, no kid is perfect. They are going to get curious. They may want to do things that are bad. Their heart may go there, you know. Um, you can remove that occasion of sin by, by saying, no, you can't be on the phone in your bedroom. You know, that, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of one. Number two, no filter is perfect. You know, if you install a filter, that's great. Um, but no filter is perfect. And the best example I can give you is Google. Um, I've actually got Google locked down at home because if you go to Google Images, even with the filters on, lots of stuff is going to get through. So accidental exposure is a big problem. You know, the kid, you think about it, um, a friend of mine told me a story of, of a child that was writing a report and they were, they were kind of researching a country and then it became they're researching beaches in that country and then it became they're researching, you know, bikinis in that country you know it that's just the way it goes and um that's the way kids are and so uh, even a great filter is not going to filter that out so you want to protect against you know accidental exposure and that kind of slip slippery slope that kids fall into the other thing i like about this is it makes you know tech communal more communal at least than it is when they're in their bedroom and, and locked away um it, it's something that happens in in a, in a sort of a community manner um one benefit of that for parents is that makes the monitoring way easier. You know, if you're walking by and the screen is facing where you're making dinner, then that, that's, you know, an easy form of monitoring that is very natural and that's happening in the kind of the structure of the home versus, okay, now I've got to go check the logs and see what's going on, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is an extra duty that the parent has to, you know, do, and it adds a lot of work to the parents. So I think that uh, that's, that's why I think step one, move to the common space, uh, you won't regret it. Okay, step two, turn it off at night. Again, remember we're starting easy. We're trying to build traction to make some progress, to feel like we're, we're getting energized about you know, doing this. Turn it off at night. What does that mean? Well, turn off the Wi-Fi. Um, one of the solutions that we'll talk about in a minute is, a, is Circle and there's others out there, but um, they have this capacity just make it shut off at a certain time. You'll sleep better. Um, you know, the, the phones is, is a more difficult thing because obviously, and I don't, I don't think I have a silver bullet on this because, you know, I've heard of kids sneaking the phone up to the bedroom and all of this. Um, that's, a, I think, something that you have to use your own parental creativity to try to navigate and find a way as well to keep track of that phone at night and find a way to make sure that, you know, that phone is under control as well. Um, all right, so step one, common areas. Step two is you are, um, you're turning off at night. Step three, now we're kind of gonna get a little bit more technical, is filtering your Wi-Fi. Now, why install a filter? If, if we're in a room, which we will be soon, which is great, especially here in Texas, um, the, uh, you know, I would raise your, I would make everybody close their eyes and raise your hand if you have a filter installed. And, and it's, it's getting better but we're still not there where a filter is just kind of a, a common, you know, appliance that you have in your house, much like a dishwasher going that is, is a filter. Um, well, why need a filter? The best I could, I mean, for my professional work, I can tell you there is so much darkness out there that not having a filter is, is you know, just huge, hugely bad news. Imagine, you know, the worst things you can think about, you know, whether it's, you know, cannibalism, child pornography, all this darkness, it's out there and it's just a click away and a filter can kind of shut that, that side of the internet down and, and keep that, keep that away from your home. Um, a, a mindset shift, I think that is applicable in this is that 
when we were growing up, you had to seek out pornography. You had to go find it. But now it comes and finds you. And that's a big, big flip. Um, the, the Wi-Fi, the home filter Wi-Fi can kind of can, can help in that area. Um, the question that I would pose if you're hesitant on getting a filter is would you leave a teenage boy at home alone with a Playboy in the coffee table drawer? Because if you don't have a filter, that's what you're doing. It, it's one click away, it's a Google away. And if you know teenage boys, you know, even the best ones, it's there. So, um, you know, I, I answer that question in the negative. I would not do that. And I hope that, you know, you'll see that as well. Um, you know, really, again, I, I've used this phrase before. Not having a filter is like having a porn store in your living room. It is. I mean, that's, it's, it's right there. And so, you know, that, that's, that's the benefit of the filter. The approach that I, that I like to recommend in terms of filtering is what's called the whitelist approach. And this is what they're using now um, in a lot of, um, you, know, you know, the men's centers and things like this. It, it's they're using this whitelist approach. And I, and I think it's great because what it does is it's basically you shut down everything. Like you, you ratchet the filter up to its highest setting and then you allow sites as you need them. So don't get me, the first you know, couple of days, weeks is going to be a total pain in the neck because you're gonna try to get to Old Navy and it's not gonna work. Um, but as you, you know, build it for your family and you allow certain sites, it, it gets more manageable, it gets easier. And um, I think that you know, my advice would be with that, with that pain that you're gonna sense when you're setting it up and the difficulty is that you will have so much peace that it is worth it. <laughs> So, um, I, you know, I'd, I'd encourage you to do it. Um, okay, so let's go back to, uh, now we're gonna get technical. So now we're gonna get, now we're gonna get kind of techy. Um, mostly because I kind of wanna show you what it's, this is like. I mean, it's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to kind of see how it works. Um, all right, so I use Circle. Some people like Circle, some people don't. There's other ones. I have another one on my um, resource list that you can use. I've used Circle for several years. I think it's great. Um, you see in this screenshot here, you can um, set up different profiles. So you can kind of have the mom and dad profile. You can have the, you know, the dash profile. You know, you can have a profile for your, you know, whatever the kids are. And then you can assign devices to those profiles. So it makes it makes the uh, process pretty, pretty family friendly. Um, what you're gonna do, you know, you get you get it. Basically, the way it works is you buy this thing. Um, some route, they have routers where it's built in and then just plug it into your home Wi-Fi, and you install an app on your phone. This is the, this is a screenshot of the app and then you have it and then it's running on your network and all your kids are going to be like, dad, I can't get to this site. And okay. Yeah, I know. What is the site? And then you add it and that will become an ongoing conversation that you're having with your kids. You know, dad, I need this site. Um, all right. What is it? And you add it, you know, it just becomes a kind of a, an ongoing thing. Um, once you have silt, filt, you know, circle installed, you know, this is what it looks like when you're inside a profile. So we clicked on one of those, you know, we, we went back and we clicked on one of those people and opened up this. This is the configuration screen. And I show this because hopefully this looks pretty, you know, straightforward to you. I and mean, this is this is the kind of stuff that we're dealing with all the time now. Um, you can see on this one a couple of things. One, you've got the, you know, what I have circled is the filter. And you can see I have it on the pre-K setting, which is the highest setting for, for um for uh, circle, and with that, you are not going to get to anything. You know, it's it's effectively breaking your home Wi-Fi, which is good because there's all this stuff out there. Um, so you you know you're, you're you've shut it all down. You've you've kind of you've, your house has gone dark on the Wi-Fi side of things. Okay, but now I want to get to all these sites. What do I do? All right, this is where um, here's a screenshot kind of just so you can see what it would look like. You know, here I tried to get to the Premier League.com. And boom, it's either it's going to give me a site. One of these things, you know, it's going to look. This is this is private, or you can't get there. Um, this is kind of what it's going to look like when you try to access a regular website after you filtered it. Um, well, I want to see the Premier League. You know, I want to see what what happened. Even though Manchester City lost today, um, I want to know, you know, what's going on. So what what do I do? All right, you go to the, you go back to the the screen, and then at the bottom there's the history button. You're going to click on that and it's going to bring you to where you can see uh, on the left side of the screen, you can see filtered and visited. And you can see I'm looking at the filtered websites 
And if you look down on the list, Premier League was filtered out. Okay, well, I click it and it brings up the window on the right. And then I set as allowed. And that's it. I mean, that, that's building your whitelist. You know, it sounds very technical, but it's just a couple of steps and it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and so, you know, you, you'll, you'll go back to the website. Oh, one big tip here is you have to close down your browser. So if, you know, if you're trying to access the Premier League and you can't get to it and you change the filter, remember, remember to close your browser back down and then reopen it. That'll just kind of refresh all the settings. And then, you know, boom, it works. I mean, that's, you hear whitelist, you hear filtering, that's the mechanics of how it works. Um, I hope, hopefully this has convinced you that this is a, you know, this is, this is very doable. All right, so we've done steps one, two, and three. We've moved technology to the common area. We're turning it off at night and we are filtering the Wi-Fi. Those are the steps. Step four is going to be turning on parental controls for all devices. This is, and I mean all devices in your home, like every device that, every device that needs a parental controls, you turn it on. Um, I would suggest uh, an inventory. So just grab a notepad, walk around your house one day and look at everything in the room and see what connects to the internet. Don't leave anything out. Think about, you know, Xboxes. There's a browser on Xboxes. Kids like to get to, you know, the, the kids that have pornography issues can get there through Xbox. All right, if you have an Xbox, you need parental controls on that. Things like Kindles. It has a browser on it, it can get out. Um, smart TVs, obviously the PCs, the iPads, you know, all these devices that you have, you want to go through your house and just make a list. And I think, I think a good rule here is if you can't figure out a way to filter the device, just throw it overboard. I mean, at that point, it's not worth having in your house. Um, you know, you, you just don't need it at that point. Um, okay, but, but wait a second. I have a filter on my home network, why do I need the devices filtered too? Um, well, the reason is that the devices can connect to the internet through multiple ways, right? One of the ways is through your Wi-Fi, but some devices are cellular enabled and those can connect to data through the cell tower. All right, well, that's an, that's an access point. And guess what? The cell tower is not filtered at all, right? So if, if you give your kid an iPhone and you filter your home network, you're, the first thing your kid's going to do is turn off the home Wi-Fi and connect up through the data to go to the cell tower, and then it's unfiltered, right? So that's why you've got to turn on the parental controls for all the devices. Um, even for devices that aren't cellular enabled, uh, let's, let's take a, you know, a, um, maybe you have a, a, an iPad, but it's got no cellular on it. They can take that and they can, you know, take it off to the friend's house and connect to their unfiltered Wi-Fi there, or take it to school and connect it there. Um, maybe even have a neighbor who doesn't have his Wi-Fi locked down. Um, you know, their kids are savvy. They know how to do this stuff. The parental controls are getting, you know, much better and they can, they can help with, help with this issue. This is a fantastic site, protectyoungeyes.com. Um, cause you're wondering, okay, how am I going to figure this all this out? You know, how am I going to figure out how to turn on parental controls for an iPad? Protect Young Eyes is a fantastic site for this. Um, it has step-by-step -step instructions that will walk you through, you know, screenshots that will walk you through configuring this, this, you know, configuring these apps. I mean, it's built for, you know, dummies like us. It's built for the tech, you know, the, the people that we're not good with technology. Uh, that's, that's, that's Protect Young Eyes. So it's fantastic. Um, let me show you a few screenshots now of what, you know, this looks like on an, on an iPhone. So I'm walking through and I am configuring an iPhone. iPhone, Apple to their credit, has built what's called screen time. And it's, it's great, um, I love it. Uh, the one downside right now, and I suspect this will change in a couple of years, is right now you turn it on and you still have to configure everything. So you turn on screen time and guess what? You still have to turn off adult websites, which doesn't make any sense, you know? Um, I think Apple will probably get there, uh, but, but you know, if you go back a couple of years ago and where we're at today, way, way better. In fact, I think uh, Apple stuff is so good that you can lock down a phone and make it really, really secure for a kid at this point, which is which is nice. So I open up settings on my iPhone I, or my kid's iPhone. I go to screen time and 
and then I'm, I'm here. I'm in, I'm in kind of the configuration window. And you can see here, like on the bottom, the content and privacy restrictions, that's at the very bottom. That's where you're going to, you can, at the top is a graph. You can see kind of the, their use of time. Um, as you scroll down, you can do other, you know, you can do other things on the phone, but I'm going to focus on the bottom one for now. Um, the content and privacy restrictions, that's where I'm going to kind of turn on the additional filtering. So I go there and then you can see, okay, I've, I've turned it on. And now on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see some of the, the, the choices that you have to make. And um, this is the stuff that I was mentioning that's not configured out of the gate. So this is the stuff that you have to go through and set. You know, you, if you want to uh, turn off, you know, explicit music, if you want to not allow them to watch movies or TV shows, or in, I get there's actually explicit books too, which is wild, but they're, you know, they're out there in, in the Apple world. So you gotta, you gotta kind of make that clean. Um, the apps one is tricky because a lot of apps that a lot of us use are, are won't work if you have it under if, if you have that one ratcheted down. Um, so that that's that's a tricky one. But that's that's configuring an iPhone. I mean that that's the way that you'll do it. Um, obviously, there's more a little bit more to it than that, but that's where Protect Young Eyes is going to help you. And you're going to go to Protect Young Eyes, pull open their i go to their you know how to configure the iPhone section, and then walk through the screenshots and and you know, do those things. Okay, we're on step five. Step five is my, you know, be judicious in allowing apps. And this is this is where I get lawyerly, you know, be judicious, sorry, what does that mean? Um, before you allow an app, you gotta think through the dangers, right? You gotta think through, all right, if I'm going to give a kid this app on their iPhone, they come to you, hey dad, can I install this? You want to think through, okay, what are the uses of this app and what are the dangers of this app? And you want to kind of do the, calcul the calculation as to whether or not you can allow this in, in your house. Um, and again, I, I think a good approach is if you can't filter it, if you can't control it, don't allow it. Um, this is another area where Protect Young Eyes is great. They have a, a screen area, an area there where they will walk you through all the commonly used apps and they actually, they kind of give you a cost benefit. You know, they tell you what the app does they tell you the risks of it. Um, they 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 err on the side of filtering because what they've been exposed to, what they've seen, um, which I, I err on that side too. But uh, but they they give it to you. This this is what it does. This is this is the cost. This is the benefits. You want to do that with every app you're allowing into your house. Um, you know, just to, let's talk real quickly about a couple of commonly used apps. Instagram, right? Um, what a lot of parents don't know is that there is highly sexualized content on Instagram. And um, this is from this is a you know a passage from Protect Young Eyes, and below you can see some images that I cut off. And actually, on Protect Young Eyes, they had uh, the images, but then they had it kind of like filtered over, so you couldn't really see the stuff. But even what they even what they had filtered over, I don't want to show you. And this is all stuff that's on Instagram. And they reported five of these things, and the only one that Instagram took off was the woman having sex with a horse. I mean, I, I hate to be that you know hit you in the face, but but this is Instagram. This is out there. Um, not one that I would give to kids when they're, you know, when they're young, for sure. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's got to be very mature to sort of have access to this. And even there, it's, you know, very dangerous, as you can see. Um, Snapchat's another one. You know, Snapchat, what parents don't know about Snapchat is, um, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a couple of, there's a couple of things. One um, here, you know, here's a nice looking kid. He, this is the, the founder of Snapchat. And the reason he made this company, you can see it here in this article from Business Insider. He was text, he was sexting girls, right? That's what they do, sending naked pictures of himself to girls. He said, I wish these photos I'm sending this girl would disappear. And then he invented Snapchat. So that's the company, like that's where it came from. That's in, and, and you're, you're basically giving your kid the ability to do that, that kind of thing. Um, that's out there. Yeah, you know, I, I think the idea of having, you know, some sort of electronic communication that is just unfiltered and, and un nothing between between kids is just uh, for, for these reasons it is very, very dangerous. I, I would not not allow it. Um, the other thing the parents don't know is the discover feature in Snapchat. And you can see to the right hand side, uh, some of the the content that's out there. So discover is kind of this, you know, you click it's one click over. You're, you're doing your, you know, snaps, but then you click over to the discover section and all of a sudden it's kind of like advertising, right? It's all these influencers advertising their stuff. 
But human nature being what it is, you can imagine how you know sexually charged this is. And that's all out there. Like it's all on there, it's all in the Snapchat. So if you give your kids Snapchat, this is the kind of stuff that they're seeing. I'm looking closely at the screen. I don't wanna read the screen, but we're talking about sick stuff. Um, that's, that's Snapchat. One thing I'll say on, on Snapchat is um, I, I've had this you know, battle myself and I've known other parents that have this battle with in the early high school years, the, maybe earlier now, the kids will come to you and they will say, can I have Snapchat? And you will say no. And they will say, all my, kid, all my friends have Snapchat. And you will say no. And it, it will get you know rough. Like they're not gonna be happy. But my son and other sons of friends of mine you know, fast forward to senior year. And I said, what did you think? Was the, are you glad we didn't give you Snapchat? And the answer is yes. Thank you for not giving me Snapchat. You know, it's that classic parenting thing. It's hard to do, but you do it and your kids will come to respect you for it later um, and appreciate it. Uh, I think that, I think that, so for that's step four. And I think step four is gonna be very involved because you're going to go through, there's gonna be a lot of apps you have to cover. Um, that was step five, sorry. Um, so, all right. So a little bit more on, on, on Jim, uh, I, I like this as well from the Jim Stenson leadership book. It's this idea of, you know, if you're, if you're looking at apps and something's making you uneasy about it, that's a signal, it's time to act. You know, don't let your uneasiness, like, you know, don't not act. That's, that's his advice, you know, when it comes to this, you know, what shows can I watch? What apps can I use? Um, let your uneasiness be your guide. And if, if, it, if it's there, you need to act, right? That, that's, kind of, that's kind of his point. Um, and, and this is the point I was making earlier, which he put it better than I did. Um, it's just that, you know, what they're going to remember at the end of the day is your loving leadership and not, you know, your mistakes, or maybe you're, you were too harsh and you didn't allow certain things. They're not going to remember that, but they're going to remember that you were loving them and you're trying to lead them. Um, so I think with apps, you know, let, let some of that stuff be, be your guide. Okay, so I'm doing all this great. You know, is there anything else I can do? Um, there's a couple of extra things and I have these on, as kind of bonus things that are out there that you can do if you're doing all of this. I don't, I don't think these things are required, but they're out there. One is Bark. Um, I like Bark, it's a monitoring software. What it does is it, it monitors your kids' social media um, sites and things like that. So you put in their accounts and then it kind of watches it for you. So you don't have to do that work. Um, you don't have to kind of go and look at the stuff, although it's probably a good idea to check it every once in a while. But, you know, generally that day to day monitoring is happening through the computer, right? It's the computer's doing it. Um, Bark does that. One thing about monitoring, you know, I think your kids should know that you're doing it. I think you need to have that conversation. It's my job to protect you. These are the things that I'm doing to try to protect the family and the technology area. You know, they should know that you're installing these things. I, I think it's a terrible idea to do this stuff and not tell your kid. So I think that's going to destroy your that loving relationship we were talking about. It's going to destroy that, and I think um, I think it'll come to bite you. So so have the conversation. This this is what I'm doing. The other thing, another monitoring thing that I use is Covenant Eyes. I think a lot of people use Covenant Eyes for filtering. I have not been happy with the filtering in the past, so I do not use it for that. But what I like about it is it runs on some devices that we have, and it sends me screenshots. Like well, you can see towards the bottom of the screen, you can see the screenshots that it's sending me which is just cool because it's like throughout the day, it's kind of taking a screenshot of what's happening on the computer. And then I get an email every morning and I can just scroll through and kind of see what's happening on the computer. Um, obviously it's gonna flag kind of bad stuff if it's there, um, but it's just also nice to kind of have uh, awareness of what's, what's happening on the device. Um, that, that's kind of how I would recommend, how I'd recommend using Covenant Eyes. Okay, so I am going to, um, you know, and in framing, you know, all of this. I love this. I love this point from the way because um, it's just kind of the inspiration to act. I think I think that that is what we have to do as parents. I think we have to act in these areas. I think it's hu hugely important. Um, OK, so let's briefly do parts two and three. I know we're getting low on time, um, but I want to I want to hit on a couple of the um, softer points, too. Um, point two is not letting your guard down or uh, having a uh, ongoing strategy for, for technology with your family. Because you've done all this stuff and that's great, but what are we gonna do going forward? Again, communication is going to be key. Um, have, it, it's all about the heart. You know, Having that conversation with your kids, I think your kids need to know about things like Cal Newport. You know, I think they need to know that, okay, there is this massive 
you know, uh, technology space where all these companies are making billions of dollars monetizing attention. Like every time you click, they earn money. You know, I think your kids need to know that. And you talk about winning their heart, you know, oh, wait, am I getting used? Like they're using me? You know, that's going to win your kid's heart. Like, I don't want to be used. Like, I, I want to be, I don't want them to use me. But that's good. That's kind of, that's the kind of communication that's going to convince your kids. Another um, point I think that was really helpful um, at my son's school, a group came in and gave a talk and they made to the point, it was an all boys school. And they made the point to these boys that, you know, if you look at pornography, the, 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 the lady, the person on the screen is not just nobody. That's a person. And guess what? There's a whole backstory. And the backstory often involves things like human trafficking and the, the, the porn world, which is very dark. And, you know, that is the reality of what's going on there. And I think those kind of conversations totally can reframe the issue for your kids. I know for, they, they told us, the parents at, that, at my kid's school, they said, this was for the boys, this was one of the most impactful things. Hearing that that image on the screen is not just an image, it's a person. And that person has a story. And if they you know, consume the product of pornography, they are in part, you know, they're, they're, they're playing into that abuse of that woman. Um, those kind of conversations I think are going to be, are going to be very, very big going forward. Um, I think your kids should be, um, and I think, you know, my wife has done a fantastic job of this. I think that your kids should be very sick of you, you know, talking to them about the dangers of pornography and being aware of those dangers and what that is, you know, at age appropriate level at a young age, um, knowing that it's out there and then having that uncomfortable conversation repeatedly. Those types of conversation are, are going to be big. The other thing I'll say is that monitoring is just gonna become a kind of a natural part of your, of your life of your, of your, as a parent. Uh, we, we, we've introduced these devices into our home and it's our responsibility to, to keep a pulse on what's going on with them. So it's just gonna be, a, you know, much like you would do your finances and balance your books, it's the same thing with technology. You're gonna to wanna to go through and look at logs. You're gonna to wanna to go make sure your strategies still make sense. Um, make, if, if a new device is introduced into the house, you're going to want to make sure to, to go through the, the, the calculation and the setup and everything. Um, it's just going to be an ongoing, an ongoing thing. Okay, what happens if I find something? You know, I, I have my kid is exposed, or my kid, I, you know, I see something. Um, the biggest advice I would have is, is don't panic and don't freak out. I mean, this is happening to like you know almost nine out of ten kids now, um, and it's normal. Um, I think you need to be calm and loving in your response. Um, you know, you, you obviously can't let it continue, but but you can be, you can approach the issue, approach the resolution in a calm and loving manner. And I think your kids will respond well to that. Um, there, there may be times when you need to call in the Calvary. You may need help uh, and, and get help if you need it, whether it's a spiritual director or um, maybe just a friend or, you know, a priest, or even, you know, if, if in the, we, if you end up with like pornography addiction type of issues, there are counselors now that are that are doing that. Um, bring in bring in the Calvary when you need to. Um, so that that's the communication side of things. Okay, so we've done you know we've done part one. We've got our house in order. We've done part two, which is is we are um, we are coming up with a strategy for ongoing. Part three. What does this look like? I would just I mean. It's, it's the outward turn, it's, it's turning towards others. I think this is a, a hugely underdeveloped area. Your kid does not live in isolation. So you can do all this stuff at home and that's great, but if he's gonna go to school, he's gonna be on the bus and there's gonna be some other kid whose parents are not doing that. You know, um, we have to be cognizant of that. Like that's the reality, that's, that's, that's what's going on. Uh, in our schools, you know, if I buy my kid a phone in sixth grade, guess what all the other sixth graders are gonna do? Daddy, can I have a phone, right? Like it's this, there's this communal sense of tech. Um, so we have to spread the good news. You know, like I said at the beginning of the talk, you are the influencers. You are the people that are gonna make a difference. Make a difference in this area. Um, with their friends, you know, your kids' friends, your kids' friends' parents, uh, in, your, in your local community, in your classes, all that sort of stuff, make a difference in this stuff. What does that look like? Um, well, part of it can just be a bit being available for a phone call. You know, uh, hey, uh, you know, get it out there. Spread the word that you know something a little bit about this, even if you're not good at it. You know, none of us are good at this. None of us are born knowing, knowing how to do this. Um, spread the word that you're interested in this tech safety and you, you'll, you're available to help and people will be calling you. You know, you'll get phone calls. Hey, how do I do this? And you can just, the encouragement to, to, to move the ball in the right direction, I think is big. Um, this is great. We're having this lecture. I think these types of uh, conversations are hugely important with parents. 
um, for awareness issues. I mean, probably a lot of you didn't know about the, you know, the discover section of Snapchat um, or, or kind of how dangerous Instagram can be. These conversations I think are, are very important, um, but then take it to that next level. You know, we did a couple of years ago, we organized a series of talks at my kid's school for every grade, like on a grade by grade level. And we just got the parents together and we had a conversation. Um, I think they, I think I might've done something like that at Western too. And I, I think that that is awesome. I think that that's the kind of stuff that we need to have happening um, more and more dynamically. Um, otherwise, I mean, otherwise we're hosed, you know, otherwise you're not going to, um, you're not going to accomplish your goal. You're not going to be able to, to keep your kids safe, help your kids flourish. Um, you know, their friends are going to have problems and then your kids are going to get, going to get roped into that. So make that outward turn, start impacting people in your community. Um, that's kind of the third, the third big part. Um, all right, so just to close quickly, and I think we're gonna have a, a question and answer session, that's great. I think the biggest thing, you know, back to Dr. Majors, be, let's be resilient, let's not panic. You know, that let's, let's break it down into manageable steps. Let's find a way to internalize it, the motivation like, to get the energy to have, you know, an impact in this area. And let's be the ones to, to make a difference in our community. As, you know, St. Jose Maria said, uh, the crusade is a matter for us, right? Crusade is a matter for us. Uh, it's our job. Um, finally, in closing, I think you know I would be remiss if I didn't mention the spiritual side of all of this. And I think that you know we need spiritual help. So bring this to your prayer. Um, think about maybe ways you could do maybe a mortification. You know, with this intention, um, maybe on a weekly basis. That would, something like that would be great. Um, just know that um, there's absolutely a spiritual warfare that's going on in this in this area i mean i know that through my job something i tell you know one thing i like about my job which is kind of weird is that my job has convinced me that good and evil exists like there is there is good and evil in the world it exists and if you doubt it call me up and we'll talk about some of the stuff that that goes on out there that we you know we, we send people to jail for um it's absolutely true there's good and evil in the world and it's absolutely true that there's good and evil in the technology uh you know space that we're that we're that we're battling um so we have to be aware of that um, turn to Our Lady and turn to St. Joseph. And I, and I think with that, um, I just want to end with um, turning to them. So let, let's turn to them. So um, Our Lady, Queen of Victory, pray for us. Virgin Most Pure, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm happy to take questions. Okay, let's see. We have some questions. Thank you so much, Rob. I think, yeah. uh, you know, the practical side of it is, is always helpful. Some parents really do not know how to tackle this. So I yeah. see you have a question right there. Okay, I will read it out loud. And um, I totally understand the reasons to have technology in common areas. But what happens when you have older kids whose school requires them to write essays on a Google Doc, uh, et cetera, and they need a quiet space to work from younger siblings that are playing and getting loud? Any suggestions? I think that is a great question. Um, and I think let me begin by saying, I think this, this, this dovetails well with the, the, the philosophical basis for everything, which is all about, it's all about the heart. And I think a good analogy is teaching them to drive. Um, you know, as they, we don't just, a kid doesn't just turn 18 and we don't just give them keys and we say, good luck. You know, it's the same thing with technology. We are responsible for teaching them to use, to use it in a responsible manner. So I think as the kids get older, I am okay with what you're describing. I, I am okay with allowing them to have, you know, the laptop perhaps in the room even. Um, depending on the kid, depending on the responsibility levels and all of this, it may be a good idea to have the door open. Uh, maybe some of those nice noise canceling headphones or, or um, you know, some sort of setup in that way, I think is, is prudent. Um, I, I think that's something you, you kind of have to figure out for your own. And, and it's, a, it's really going to be kind of, you know, kid by kid. Um, but, but again, remember, you know, they're approaching 18. And, and so if you as your kid approaches the senior year in high school and, and, you know, out the door, um, I think these, the, the, what you're describing is a good opportunity for them to be exercising that, that freedom. Um, and hopefully you have some of the trip wires in place that we talked about. Those would be the things like the filters, um, maybe bark, things like that. If you have that kind of stuff in place, you can get, um, you know, signals, you can get maybe alerted if there is a problem. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's, hopefully that answers the question. Regarding that, um, Rob, I just wanted to mention that I watched a um, documentary a few years ago, which is called Over 18, which deals with the problem of 
pornography. It's a very uh, hard and strong documentary, but uh, you know, of course, it's against the pornography. But they interview this kid that is um, eight years old, and where did he find pornography? Well, of course, on his phone. So some images popped out, appeared, and he watched pornography in the common area. Okay. Mm. His parents, I mean, they were sitting at the dinner table. He was doing his homework. These were parents that were taking care of the kid. You know, they had oh, wow. the, the, you know, you know the, 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 the computer in the common area or, you know, their phone and he was doing his homework and he was, he became so good at it that he would just quickly glance at it, you know, and just continue. And the parents, you know, were not sitting behind him were around him, you know, sitting on the table. So even then you have to, you have to be careful. Yes. Uh, so that's why it's important, you know, to form to form them our children in, in you know in virtue, in fortitude, as you were you were saying, to form their heart, so that you don't have to, you know, um, you know, these are good steps, but they are not infallible. That's what I wanted to point out too. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that, that's a huge point, and it's interesting. You know, you'll see, and this is kind of what you're describing you'll see in kids this, even when you have the technology in the common area, you see this natural turn, for example, towards the wall, <laughs> right? Like they, they want to be, there's something about devices and privacy. Like nobody likes somebody looking over their shoulder on the computer. And it's the same, it's the same thing with kids. Um, and, and I think what you're describing, you absolutely you hit the nail on the head. It is not infallible. These, these steps are not, it's not like you can just check out and be done. You know, you do these things, you're fine. Um, this stuff is meant to work in conjunction with the virtue formation and the character building, which those things together, I think are, are best positioning your child for success in this, frankly, crazy tech world that's out there. Yeah, and um, I also wanted to add that you know, despite some people get discouraged because they say, well, my kids are already older, you know, I have teenagers, so I've kind of missed the boat. Mm -hmm. But no, I think uh, I want to encourage the parents to, to really think that nothing is lost. Um, it is lost when you say, okay, I'm going to install the filters, I'm going to control, I'm going to monitor all the time. And that is just the only thing you're going to do because... Yeah. You know, I have parents from friends that have told me, oh, I have, you know, they told me to have them remove this app and we did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, three days later, the, the kid had, you know, that app back on his <laughs> phone. So I said, why don't you try, you know, educating your son in fortitude and, yeah. you know, doing things, you know, having him do things that require effort, for example. Yeah. And she started doing that and she said, it's amazing how that, that helped me, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he had realized how, how, you know, how, um, you know, the, the lack of fortitude this kid yeah. had um, and the lack of resilience, you know, resilience is the more, you know, modern word yeah. that we use now, uh, but it's basically the same. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I want to get, you know, all those parents that have older children not to get discouraged. Of course, it's better to start early. Uh, but if you have teenagers, it's never too late. You can always start, you know, educating in virtue and implementing the, the steps you were suggesting. Yeah. And I think you can frame it like we talked about as not just you're helping your kid in virtue, but yourself in virtue, right? Because this is going to be difficult. And this, you talk about a difficult challenge, like getting a handle on this stuff is hard work. Um, but if you frame that as a, a chance for yourself to develop fortitude for resilience, I think instead, of, you know, when you're, when you're faced with that discouragement, doing that, like making that shift for yourself, I think that would probably be very helpful as well. Totally. Example is always, is always, you know, key in when raising our kids. So teaching with example, which doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. It means that they, our kids have to see us struggling to become better persons ourselves. Yeah. So, so anyway, yeah, example is key in this area. Yeah, that makes you know, sense. We're not gonna tell them, no, do not use your technology so much if we are you know, ourselves addicted to technology. <laughs> you know? um, so they have to see us struggling with that. And yeah, so absolutely. Anyway, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I don't know if there are any more questions. We have a little bit more time. Anybody else wants to add um, ask another question? Well, otherwise, um, he mentioned some um, a handout. He's going to email me the handout and I will send it to you and I will post it on the website too, together with a, with a video recording. 
And just to, you know, to finish, if nobody else has a question, you know, the, remember to recommend this talk, uh, you know, as part of this AdWord uh, turn that, that Rob was suggesting as the, the last step, that we have to become influencers. And uh, maybe we do not have all the answers right now in this area, but we can definitely point to some areas and this video is a great re resource, I think. Okay, so, well, thank you so much, Rob. And um, yeah. I guess we don't have any more questions. So <laughs> anyway, I, I think you covered, you know, you know, wonderful, wonderful, you gave us, you know, very good and practical advice for us to implement, you know, very, um, you know, step-by-step -step guidance. So thank you so much, Rob. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank good you. Good luck with your work. Okay. Sure. And if anybody out on the call ever needs, you know, help, don't feel, you know, feel free to reach out to me too. I'm, I'm happy to help anyway. I can. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you all. This was the last uh, session, as I said earlier, of the Parenting for um, with Purpose series. And, you know, they're all on the website, so you can watch them all if you missed one or missed many. So thank you so much for joining us. And this concludes uh, our um, lectures. And hopefully we can start with family enrichment in person uh, in the fall. Okay, bye-bye.